Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of Monday Morning. Steve Crosby here. We're taking a look at the misuse and abuse of Matthew 18. We're going to talk about the first application misuse. We're going to get to the text at the end of these application misuses. The first and most common one that I hinted at in an earlier episode is using Matthew 18 as a speech control template. That is, you are not allowed to speak or to make any sort of ask questions or make any sort of dissenting opinion known unless you run it by the church hierarchy. Uh, you go to them first because you have an issue and you go to them first and you bring uh, your concerns to them. You know, you can't share concerns about the community over a meal with your peers. It's got to go up to the hierarchy. Matthew 18 is easily used as a vehicle to suppress dissent, to... Uh, suppress uh, individual study. Individual study is discouraged. I've been in churches where it was taught from the pulpit that you should not read books that is not approved by your leadership. You know, and Protestants make fun of the Catholic imprimatur, you know, how Catholics have, 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 a, have a, an imprimatur, a seal, a mark on approved books. And Protestant churches do the same thing. We don't want you reading, you know, that book. You might get strange idea. And then what will happen is, or let's say you notice a problem, let's say like planting microphones around the church. And you will, let's say, let's say you, you go to the leadership in what they consider to be an appropriate way. Well, they will flip it on you that because you're bringing the problem, you become the problem. No one else has an issue. You're the first one we've ever heard. No one else has any problem with that. It's a deflection. It's a deflection of the matter at hand. And the most common one is, like I mentioned earlier, that they'll use also, or a common one, is that a, 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 another deflection is, well, you didn't follow the Matthew 18 protocols. You know, you should have gone first to, to, to you know, your, the, the person who's offended or, or whatever. I'll give you a, 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 a true life example. I know people whose spouses have tried to kill them. Well, you know, you need to go to your spouse first. No, you need to go to the police first. You know, you it's particularly, you know, abuse, abusing women. You know, uh, I'm going to give a true example that somebody got really, really angry at me for being candid about this, but we're adults. This actually happened. A woman came into my office and said, you know... And she wasn't from my fellowship at the time, but she was just in Iraq. And she says, you know, my husband wants to use a Coke bottle on me instead of his male sex organ. And I've been to every pastor in town and they say that I need to submit and, you know, I need to pray for my husband and that God would break through. In the meantime, I have to submit to having, you know, a, a Coke bottle used on me in, in, in our sexual sexual life. She was serious. And I said, no, you don't have to. You need to get out. That's abuse. You're the first pastor. Every other pastor's told me I've had to submit. Disgusting. Both the sex bottle story and the recommendation from ignorant pastors. So, when the merit of an issue is nullified because of a supposed failure to follow protocol, you are being abused. You are being controlled. You are being manipulated. Speech 
is articulated thought. Thought affects actions. So whoever controls the speech controls reality. I'm going to give that to you again. Speech is articulated thought. Thought forms actions and actions shape reality. Therefore, whoever controls the speech shapes reality. This is as authoritarian, dictatorial as Stalin, as Putin, as Hitler, as Idi Amin. It is a totalitarian, dictatorial mechanism that has been massaged over by, um, I'm going to say, kindly misled, if not ignorant pastors and teachers, laden with insecurity, who want to maintain and control the reality of that church. Because if it's a de denominational type of church, their paycheck depends on them defending the status quo and just keeping everybody happy and make sure everybody stays tithing. So if you rock the boat, let's say even, even if you follow the protocols in your church, you're the problem. And it's also the, oh, it's the can't talk rule. You're not allowed to talk. That's a violation of Matthew 18. Have you been talking to your friends about that? <clears throat> you didn't come to us about that. You've been talking to your friends. That's rumor and gossip. And that's a violation of Matthew 18. Isolated individuals or isolating individuals so that they cannot share mutual concerns is a form of psychological segregation to make you feel like you're the one with the problem. How many of you have ever had in the church and, and you, you're having a conversation after you've left the church? You mean it happened to you too? Oh well, yeah, I didn't know it happened to you. Well, that's because they have the can't speak gag rule enforced on the fellowship. And human beings can't talk to each other because they're under the, the can't talk rule. And you will be labeled as the deviant. You will be labeled as Jezebelian. You will be labeled as unsubmissive. You will be labeled as divisive. You will be, la be labeled as rebellious. Sometimes for just even an honest convert, uh, question, maybe a question. And so a common way to shame or suppress another person into silence is to skillfully level the expertise of others against that individual like this. Well, you know, you don't know the Bible like we do. You know, how dare you? I actually had a, I actually had a, a pastor uh, uh, say that to me. I asked, my spirit was right. I wasn't accusatorial. We'll talk about accusation later on. That's, we can't be part of that vibe. But this is what I, I asked a very intriguing, humble question of a leader. And here's how, here's what he said to me. I do not feel called as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to have to answer your questions. And it was just a question about how they were interpreting an Old Testament passage and doing great harm with it. And I just asked, I explained it to you. I wasn't attacking them. It wasn't the slightest bit of accusatorial or attack in my question. And that's the answer I got. This issue of speech control. This is um, this one. What, do you think you're smarter and better than everyone else? No one else has this concern. Look at everybody else is happy. They can say that because they prohibited you from talking to other people. No one else has brought this, this matter before us. Are you saying that you're smarter than everybody here? You're more spiritual? No, you're just a normal human being. 
you have a human being with some concerns and some questions. So to psychologically isolate people and either literally or psychologically label them as deviant because of their question and using any form of Matthew 18 as a justifier is a gross, corrupt, borderline criminal and psychologically abusive misuse of anything related to Matthew 18 in any way. And you should never have to put up with it if you experience it and you don't find repentance in the folks that are uh, enforcing these rules. You need to seriously consider looking for another fellowship for your own well-being's sake. I'll see you next time.